Welcome to Cooking with Carolina Nephrology. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman, and as you can see, we are not in our normal, regular kitchen. We are in a big, fancy studio here today with a guest chef who is an expert, Chef Courtney McKnight. Hi, Courtney. How you doing? And Courtney's gonna be walking us through a delicious chicken recipe and uh, really teaching us how to make healthy food taste delicious. So you got the two things that you need for making a delicious, healthy recipe. We've got an expert chef, and we've got a doctor who uh, loves nutrition. <laughs> so what are we gonna make today, Courtney? Uh, today we're gonna make some chicken tarragon. Okay. Uh, it uses the poaching method, which we're gonna maintain with a thermometer and keep that under 180 degrees to keep the chicken nice and moist. Okay, this is a, this is a recipe or a technique that's very different from anything I've ever done as far as cooking. Um, what is the point of a poaching recipe? Uh, the reason that a lot of recipes call for poaching is it takes leaner cuts of meat that don't have a lot of fat in them and it adds the cooking medium, the liquid to it and adds extra moisture to them. So typically you see it with chicken breast, um, some lighter cuts of pork possibly, um, and definitely a lighter seafood like white fish and such, such like that. Okay. So the first step here we're gonna take and we're gonna rub down the inside of this pan a bit just to coat it. So he's using butter. You don't usually see me cook with butter, but butter will add a delicious, rich flavor to this dish. And it's okay to use a little bit of butter. And now we're gonna take this shallot here and I'm gonna slice up this shallot a little bit. And so we're gonna sprinkle these around the bottom. You chopped that much faster than I would have. <laughs> it's practice, it's yeah. practice. Okay. Um, the recipe usually calls for a little dry tarragon in the bottom, but I like to go with some fresh. And so I'm just going to take about a sprig and a half there and then a couple sprigs of thyme. And we're just going to lay those in the bottom of the pan. Okay. Still, the pan's not on. And then we have our chicken breast here. And we're going to lightly season just a little bit of salt and pepper, trying to be healthy. And, and sometimes I find that if you put a little bit of salt on kind of right at the beginning on the raw meat that really at the end you don't feel like you have to add any more because it kind of seeps through the whole dish. Is that, is that true? That, that is true. Um, I know that a lot of um, dietitians are trying to get people to move away from using salt. Uh, the amount of salt that we're allowed to eat each day is a very small amount. It's very It's small. about a qu less than a quarter teaspoon. Um, and so they're trying different things um, using uh, peppers, using spicy mm -hmm. uh, flavors, citrus, acids to bring out other flavors other than salt. So you don't need to use as much salt. Okay, so for this we're using boneless, skinless chicken breast, Correct. right? Correct. And the difference in saturated fat between a chicken breast versus a chicken thigh uh, is significant. And so if you're using chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts, you know, maybe you'll want to um, use a different lower fat substitute for a different portion of your recipe. Now chicken thighs I don't think would work with this kind of poaching, right? Because they're not... It is a more, it's a fattier type meat and you'd end up meat. with probably some of the fat floating to the top. Okay. Um, kind of make the sauce a little fatty as well because we're going to use that liquid to reduce down at the end to make a sauce. Okay. But I want you to know that it's okay sometimes to cook with chicken thighs or something like that. Sometimes they're easier to keep moist, but um, you know, make the side dishes low fat. Okay. So, so for this recipe here, um, we want to make sure that we choose a pan to perfectly fit the chicken. Um, you don't want to overcrowd the pan, but you want to make sure there's not too much space or else we won't be able to cover it and fully submerge it. We're going to do what we call a submergent poaching, so it's fully covered in the liquid. So we're going to be using some unsalted chicken stock. Um, now, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is the difference between a broth and a stock. Mm -hmm. uh, broths are made by simmering meat, whereas stocks are made by simmering bones. If you've ever mm -hmm. made chicken soup using a whole chicken with bones in it, mm -hmm. the next day you go to pull your chicken uh, soup out of the refrigerator and it looks like Jell chicken jello. Yeah. Uh, it sounds kind of weird, but it does. <laughs> but that's a good thing. That right. means that you pulled the collagen out of the bones, we've thickened it, it has a gelatinous consistency. That's what we're looking for. That's why stocks have so much more flavor than broths. Hmm. And they actually just started selling stocks in the store about three, four years ago. Before that, it used to be nothing but broth. So do we have to use stock for this recipe? We don't have to. Um, we can just use broth, uh, but this will help with our finished sauce. So use a stock. Right? It'll taste yeah. better. You should always buy stocks. Yeah. See, from now on, if, if you buy broth in the store, pick the stock up instead of the broth. Huh. It'll, you'll, okay. you'll really thank yourself later. Great. So we're going to go ahead and 
pour that in there and we want to make sure that we fully submerge our chicken breasts in our cold pan still. cold pan haven't turned it on yet and now i'm going to go ahead and turn it on what temperature did you pick to turn it on here um well because we're standing right here with it mm -hmm. and we can kind of see it heat up i i turned it up on a high just to start it um once i start seeing some fumes or some uh, steam come up from the top of it and before it starts to actually move and mm -hmm. bubble I'll go ahead and take the temperature to see where we're at okay. and then I'll adjust my temperature at that point. For someone who's making doing poaching for the first time maybe that would be recommended for them just to start off at a very low heat and just keep using the thermometer yeah. until you reach that 180 degrees just to make sure you don't bring it over 180. I, I don't like to use lids in this and even the recipe calls for not using a lid because it does want some of the steam to escape. Okay. If all of the steam is trapped in there, well, steam is at 212, we know we're gonna be past our poaching. Hmm. So we're gonna end up making this little circle and I actually cut a little slit in the middle of it to let some of that steam escape. Okay. okay? So what we do is we have a half sheet of parchment paper here um, or in the grocery stores, this is considered a full sheet and we're gonna fold it in half once and then we're gonna go ahead and fold it in half a second time. Now with the open end towards you, you want the closed ends away. At that point there, we're gonna pretend we're making a paper airplane. Okay. So we're gonna envision this being our center line. We're gonna go ahead and fold that there. And we're gonna fold this one here. And then take that whole paper airplane looking thing and fold it in half. So now we should have a piece of paper that looks like that. Now to get the correct size, we're gonna start by measuring from the middle here out to the edge and wherever the edge is, that's where I'm gonna cut with my scissors. Okay. Okay, and I usually give it an extra inch or so just in case. I told you he was a professional. He's good. Just the one cut, okay. So now we have a nice circle. Wow. And we're going to go ahead and take and just put a little slit in the middle there. And now we're going to set this on top. And I usually like to push it, the paper down a little bit to get it, get it in there. You want to kind of make a happy little home for the chicken to poach in. Okay. Our goal is between 165 and 180. And 180. Yeah, no we, higher than 180. If we bring it above 180, we're actually going to be simmering. Okay. We okay. don't want to simmer. What happens to the chicken if you simmer? Uh, it can get a little more tough. Okay. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to try to, uh, I'm sure you've heard low and slow when we're mm -hmm. talking about barbecue. Mm -hmm. This is basically the example of that recipe or of the low and slow idea. We're going to do it low temperature for a while. We want it to slowly heat up so that the muscles don't tighten up too fast okay. and then end up having chewy chicken. How often do you check it? Um, once it actually, once you start seeing steam, yeah. um, you know, you check it to get that right temperature and then maybe every three or four minutes. Okay. And so we'll stick a thermometer in the chicken and make sure she's at a happy 165. Okay. And then we're ready to remove the chicken and make our sauce. Perfect. Great. So while that is going, we're going to go ahead and make our brown rice pilaf. Awesome. So you've, you've got some kind of partially cooked rice here? What is this? Yes, well the problem is is that a lot of people are afraid of cooking brown rice or they've cooked it the wrong way mm -hmm. or they've you know, it ends up mushy or it's undercooked. And a lot of times when I cook brown rice, I actually parboil it. So I'll get a mm. pot of boiling water and okay. cook it almost like pasta for just about six to eight minutes. And I strain all the water out uh -huh. and then I want to make sure I put it right in the fridge to cool it okay. so the rice doesn't overcook because I'm still going to actually cook it for another 15 minutes. Normally, brown rice takes close to 30, 35. Now, the pilaf method means to coat in fat. Hmm. So that means the rice grains are gonna be coated in fat. We're gonna start yeah. with a little bit of olive oil here. And it gives you a, kind of a richer rice flavor at the end? Uh, yes, it, it, it adds a little bit of fat on the outside of the rice. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes it a little bit fluffier. And okay. of course, it is gonna have a little bit more depth to it, especially if you're using a nice olive oil or or something like that. Okay. So now s traditional pilafs may have just onions or shallots. I like to put a full mirepoix just to add some extra vegetables to it. Okay. So we're going to use a little bit of celery here. Okay. And I like to make sure we cut our vegetables nice and small. And we're going to be using brown rice here today. And a lot of times people wonder, is brown rice healthier than white rice? Well, it's not as processed and brown rice has a little bit more fiber in it. And if you're looking at things like glycemic index, it has a different glycemic index than white rice. And so from that standpoint, it's a little bit healthier. But the key to me, uh, as far as telling you how to, eat, how to eat healthy, is to just don't use large portions. Don't put 
four cups of rice on your plate, top it with a chicken breast, and think because you're using brown rice, it's healthy. You know, we're talking half a cup to maybe a cup servings of this rice, and try not to go back for seconds, and that's the way to kind of limit your calories here. The other stuff is not as important. So you have this on what temperature are we going um, to? Right now, I'm going to crank it. Okay. I want to get that, those vegetables cooking a little bit. Okay. I want to hear that sizzle right there. Great. And, and none of these vegetables are, are problems for anybody with kidney disease. A little bit of carrot, a little bit of celery is fine. Uh, the thyme, of course, is fine. The shallot is fine. None of these will be a problem as far as people who are looking to limit their potassium in their diet. So how much rice did you start with? What are we talking here? Now, I did start with two cups of rice. Okay. Now, normally, you're using brown rice. Your liquid to brown rice ratio is going to be much different. But because I did par cook this rice, we're going to use the same ratio that we normally would with white rice. Okay. And what's so that ratio? It's going to be one? two to one. Two to one. Two to one. Okay. And since I did put two cups of rice in there, we're going to put four cups of chicken stock okay. or a full quart. And then like all rice, we're going to go ahead and wait until this comes to a simmer. And then we're going to cover it and turn it down to a very low temperature. And so now our rice is on and our chicken's still poaching, but we are probably about halfway through our chicken poaching process. That was kind of a mouthful. And what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to go ahead and flip these chicken breasts. And so we're just going to gently lift up. Now, I love mixing kale with corn. Kale, if you have kidney disease and are worried about potassium in kale, it's actually one of the lower potassium green leafy vegetables. So you can have some uh, kale if you're even watching your potassium. Don't have the whole plate full of kale, but you can have some. Now, anytime you roast a vegetable, we're always just going to add extra depth, hmm. extra flavor to the dish than just having raw corn put into it. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Now okay. I did have some garlic oil that I made. Mm. So I tossed it in salt and pepper and garlic oil and then roasted it for about 40 minutes in the oven. There's always a hidden step. There's it's always <laughs> that hidden garlic oil there. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got some red peppers that I've okay. sliced up and then we've got some shallots. Okay. So now we got our pan warming up and we're gonna use another tea, about a teaspoon and a half of this olive oil here. Pan's warmed up, so we got some shallots. And we always talk shallots and garlic and onion are a great way to get flavor into a dish without adding a lot of salt or extra fat or things like that. So now we're gonna throw in our peppers. So those are cooking pretty good. And again, I don't like my vegetables to be mushy. Yeah, me let's, let's have a little bite. Let's have a little crunch to our vegetables. So our kale here. And if you make them mushy, a lot of times you actually get rid of all the nutrients in those vegetables. Correct. Wow, look how pretty this looks. That's looking yeah. so pretty and smells so good. So how long are we going to cook this for? Not long, right? Not long. I'm just trying to reheat the corn and okay. reheat the kale. Okay. Everything's pretty much cooked. The peppers are definitely nice and tender now. Wow. Is done. All right. She is done. Okay. We're going to take the chicken out of the pan mm -hmm. and set it in a different pan. We're going to reduce that, that stock, that cooking liquid, um, probably about, about two thirds. Okay. Uh, and that, that really concentrates the flavor? It will really concentrate the flavor. Uh, then we're going to strain out the herbs that we had in there and okay. any of the smaller chicken pieces uh, to make a cleaner looking sauce. So our tarragon kind of has a very similar taste to fennel. Okay. Where it's going to have kind of that licorice flavor to it, um, that black licorice flavor. Uh, very mild though, but then definitely has a kind of an herbaceous feel to it, of course, because it is an herb. So when you're adding an herb to a recipe like this, I noticed it, you put it kind of in the poaching liquid, and then you're going to put it on top a little bit of fresh. Is that something that you often do? A lot of times you'll see that. Okay. Um, some chefs will maybe do it just for color, um, but I'm doing it for it, like layering of flavors. Okay, so we've got our sauce now that's reduced down by about two thirds? Yeah, it's okay. about two thirds. So we're gonna, I got a little strainer here, a okay. fine mesh strainer. Okay. Go ahead and strain that through there. This is what separates the chefs from the amateurs right here. And now we've got our fresh tarragon. Okay. Toss that in there. We're going to put about two tablespoons or one ounce of cream in there. And what I'm going to do is put this chicken back in here. Okay. So we're going to reheat our chicken. Reheat now our chicken. Bit. Yeah, can't serve cold chicken. <laughs> Let that heat up. Okay. We've got our rice that's almost finished here. Now, 
You've got some great tips for making rice and making it fluffy at the end and not stick together. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's a method that's used with uh, jasmine rice and basmati rice traditionally. Okay. And what they do is they end up rinsing the rice. You put your rice into a strainer like the one I strained mm -hmm. the, the sauce through and you run cold water under it and shake it until the water comes out clear. And what that ends up doing is it's washing some of the starch away so that your rice will be much more fluffy. Wow, okay, so these are the tips that make the difference between a chef cooked meal and the home cooked meal. Now, if you don't have the time, you don't need to rinse your rice or things like that, but clearly it will make it better at the end. So we'll go ahead and reheat our vegetable here. Okay. So we got our rice here. I'm gonna stir up just the top just to get some of them vegetables mixed in there. Okay. Okay, so put, a little, got... put a little of this down in the middle here. A little bit of rice, that is what, maybe a, almost a half a That's cup. That's about a half a cup half right a there, cup. which okay. is... A great serve size, serving size. But most people would wanna put four more exactly. spoons on there. Yeah, it's a perfect serving size. And so we've got our vegetable here. Okay. We got the green, the yellow, the red. Beautiful All that colors. good color mixed together. And I just lay that right in front there. Beautiful. All right. And now we'll take our chicken that we sliced up. Okay. Lay it right over the top. And then we've got our sauce left over. Can't forget the delicious sauce. Mm. Wow. Go ahead and spoon some of that. Now again, it's not too thick, but we don't have to have gravy. We're okay. not having fried chicken today. Well, okay. So, <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the epitome of a healthy home cooked meal. I mean, you can see it didn't take us that long to do this and it is fantastic. It doesn't get better than this. I have never been so excited to taste one of our meals. Go ahead. All right, let's do it. Let me get some greens, some rice, some chicken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The chicken is so flavorful and moist. It's the poaching. Mm. Thank you for joining us today on Cooking with Carolina Nephrology. I had the honor of cooking with Chef Courtney and eating his delicious food. I'm sure we learned a lot and you will learn a lot. And you can find Chef Courtney at Plate 108 in Greer, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You can find us on our website, carolinanephrology.com slash cooking, as well as on our Facebook page, Cooking with Carolina Nephrology, where you can follow me on Twitter at The Cooking Doc. Thanks for having us. Thanks to Courtney. That was great. We'll see you next time.